Uh, Question number two, Moana Mackey. Thank you, Madam Speaker. My question is to the Minister responsible for climate change issues and asks, what landmark environmental legislation has passed recently? The Madam Honourable David Madam Speaker, Parker. Legislation for an emissions trading scheme and legislation to introduce biofuels have both been passed by Parliament in the last Uda. fortnight. The ETS being phased in over the next five years is a cornerstone of the government's climate change action, creating incentives to invest in cleaner technology, to improve the efficiency of our production, and to encourage climate-friendly investments such as forestry. The Biofuel Act will see vehicles start to run on bi sustainable biofuels, marking a transition away from reliance on imported oil. A supplementary question, Moana Mackey. Supplementary to the minister. How will these two pieces of legislation affect ordinary New Zealanders? Speaker. Uh, the Honourable David Parker. Madam Speaker, these initiatives will future-proof our country, cushion the impact of rising oil and electricity prices, and ensure access for our primary exports into high-value markets. The country already faces a cost under the Kyoto Protocol for increases in emissions. The ETS will reduce that cost by reducing emissions. And emitters, rather than just taxpayers, will start to bear the cost of their greenhouse gas pollution. To help New Zealand families, we're instigating the biggest push for household energy efficiency ever seen, $1 billion to help make New Zealand homes warmer, drier and cheaper to heat. A supplementary question, the Honourable Dr Nick Smith. Uh, to the Minister, will he accept responsibility for errors made in this critical legislation, given that he insisted on introducing and passing 785 amendments on one day, or will he do as Annette King has on the Electoral Finance Act and blame officials, Parliament and everyone else but Labor for mistakes? Madam Speaker, the, Honourable David Parker. the National Party always resorts to process arguments when it has none of substance. Once, once again, you know, we've got National this week being caught saying one thing to one audience, one thing to another. David Carter was reported in the Gisborne uh, paper this week as saying... Oh, point of order, the Honourable Dr Nick Smith. Uh, Madam Speaker, my question is will he accept responsibility for mistakes in the legislation? We've heard all sorts of other irrelevancies. I think the Minister should address the question. The Honourable David Parker. Of course I take responsibility for the legislation. I took it through the House. The National Party has once again been caught telling audiences what they, want to, they think they want to hear. We had David Carter in Gisborne earlier this week saying it was an economic folly to bring agriculture into an emissions trading scheme. Well, that's what's reported in the paper. Blame them, not me. Last night, last night, he and Lockwood Swift were both saying, yes, agriculture should be in, and then spent 10 minutes explaining why it shouldn't be. Supplementary question, Moana Mackey. Supplementary to the Minister. What credible reasons has he seen for opposing this important legislation? The uh, Honourable David Parker. Madam Speaker, I've seen none. The National Party pretended to oppose the biofuel bill on environmental grounds, despite the sustainability criteria meeting the approval of the Greens, who are paragons of environmental integrity. And National opposed the emissions trading scheme on the basis of six very weak so-called principles that crumble under any kind of close analysis. There were no issues of substance to support their opposition. They were just excuses for delay. It was all politics, not principle, that caused National to flip-flop. They thought that by pulling support for the bill, they could embarrass the government by the legislation failing to pass. Question. They were wrong. Jeanette Fitzsimons. Does the minister agree that while a price on carbon is a much needed first step, there is an enormous amount more work to do to reduce New Zealand's domestic emissions, such as improved investment in public transport and active transport, vehicle fuel efficiency standards, better planning of cities and zero energy buildings? And will he gazette a target date at which New Zealand's net emissions will flatten off and start to head downwards permanently? Madam Speaker, uh, the Honourable David Park. Uh, Madam Speaker, I do agree that the ETS on itself would not uh, be enough, and we're making substantial progress on uh, renewable electricity. We've got related targets there. Uh, we've got dates to which uh, we're aiming to achieve carbon neutrality in the whole of the energy sector, uh, and we're making great progress on public transport too. 
Uh, supplementary question, the Honourable Tariana Turi. Tēnā koe, Madam Speaker. Tēnā tātou katoa. Has the Minister seen the statement from Te Ohu Kaimoana that, and I quote, Ngai Ta'u and Ngāti Awa have concerns that they have not been due care of their settlements in developing the ETS, and that should concern us all. And what assurance can he give to Te Ohu Kaimoana, Ngai Ta'u and Ngāti Awa that their concerns are being addressed? Uh, Madam Speaker, uh, the Honourable David. I, I have seen at least some of those reports. Uh, in respect of the Naitahu uh, issues, I explained the government's position on that in the House recently. Essentially, there has been quite generous compensation already paid. In fact, the value of carbon emission units exceeds the value of the land as at the transfer date. Uh, we question the claim as to the amount of the loss, uh, but notwithstanding both of those things, we are checking to see whether there were any with holding of information at the time of the settlement, and if there was, the Minister for Treaty Negotiations has said he will look at the matter further.